Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, that was very cheerful, Gwyneth. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, it is, as always, very good to be with you here this morning, whether we are uh, together uh, in person here or whether you are watching this at home a week later um, and we are together uh, virtually. It is good to be with you this morning. Um, there are a couple of announcements that I need to make this morning. Uh, one is to encourage you, to remind you uh, of a couple of precautions that we need to uh, be a little bit more vigilant on um, and, and, and to be clear about why we are taking precautions. So, um, and, and first I wanna share with you why we why we are not, no, the reasons we are not taking precautions. We are taking precautions, but not because of these reasons. Okay, so we are not taking precautions because we are afraid. We are not taking precautions because we are afraid. Because we remember that Christ is the sovereign king over everything. And that everything in this world is sustained and has its being every moment of every day through the power of Christ. And that Christ promises that he will work all things to the good of those who love him. So we are not taking precautions against COVID-19 because we are afraid. We are also not taking precautions because the government tells us we have to, okay? Because it's true that the government does uh, recommend strongly or tell us that we have to um, do various things, but that's not why we're taking those precautions. In fact, if the government was telling us that we had to do or not do things that were absolutely contrary to the Word of God, if the government told us we had to stop worshiping God and start, for example, worshiping Justin Trudeau, right? We would just say no, and then we would perhaps suffer the consequences, but it wouldn't matter because our faith in Jesus Christ is far more important than what the government tells us to do. So we're not doing these things because the government tells us to do them, and we're not doing these things because uh, we, we are afraid but instead, we are doing these things out of love. Out of love for God, whom we are called to love with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and out of love for our neighbor. Our neighbor, of course, being basically everybody both the people here in the pews and the people at home and the people around us in Athens and the people in Canada and the people throughout the world, every single person is our neighbor. And because we love them and because we love God who told us to obey the authorities that he has put in place, that is why we obey the precautions that our government and health authorities have asked us to obey, okay? So that is just a reminder of why we do it, not out of fear, not out of blind obedience to the state, but out of love. Come on in. Your Jeremy bench is over there, so if you're still part of that bubble. Oh, good. Okay, excellent. All right, sorry to draw attention to you, but it's probably Darcy's fault that you're late, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so that's why we're obeying these precautions. So with, uh, with reminders to that then, I want to remind you, council would like to remind you that we need to be a little bit more careful about how we exit the building, okay? After the service, when we are finished, um, we are getting pretty close together when we are exiting the building. 
Okay, so uh, it should be that there should be six feet between your bubble and any other bubble. And so please take your time on exiting. Um, also for you up in the balcony, there are less of you this time than there were last week. You need to be aware of um, how far away people are on the stairs um, and so that the people on the stairs can be aware of people who are down here, right? We also want to encourage you that if you would like, it would be great if you kept your coats with you. That both ensures that there's no um, bunching up at the coat racks and so on, um, nor that there's germiness being spread from coat to coat. Not that that is a real threat, but um, it also provides the opportunity that we can double our exiting capacity by um, some people going out these doors and other people heading out those doors. So if you if you keep your coat with you, then um, it can be a smooth exit to the back. Okay, so uh, be aware of where people are and spread yourselves out a little bit more um, conscientiously, please. Also, afterwards, if we are socializing outside, which is fantastic and wonderful, please uh, be a, a little bit more conscious of the space between your bubble and other people's bubbles. And um, if you are socializing outside and you are within six feet of each other, uh, which you really shouldn't be, um, but if you are, then please make sure you have your mask on uh, then as well. Um, that will not only prevent us from catching anything from each other and spreading it to someone else or, or increase that likelihood, but it will also um, enable us to uh, be clearly expressing love to our neighbors around us. Okay? So, uh, those are uh, a couple of the announcements that I need to make. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about um, some other things pastorally when we get to our congregational prayer time. In the meantime, I would invite you to stand and receive God's greeting this morning. Welcome, brothers and sisters, into this place. This place that is sovereign ground of Christ the King, together with all places which are under his domain, everywhere and every when. Welcome, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. We'll invite the praise team forward and we will, uh, we will hear together Lord, our Lord, your glorious name. 